Welcome back to the Acting Analysis and Tips to Animators, and today I'm going to take a look at the movie The Curse of La Llorona. I have to say it like that every time, I don't know why Llorona. Today is going to be a bit different because we're looking at only one sequence. Why? Because I talked about that in my class during some of the Q and A's that I have, and I thought, ah, that's kind of an interesting topic. Let me bring this into an actual clip for YouTube. So, and speaking of which, my name is JD, and I do act analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips. I do lectures about animation. I do rig reviews, proc reviews, animation news, feedback stuff, all kinds of things. You know the drill. Peek around the channel if you like it. Subscribe if you don't like it. Don't subscribe. But if you do, it helps grow my channel. But that's it. That's the YouTube pitch. But let's take a look at that one sequence. I'll explain to you why I want to show you this. For context, this is the sequence where she was taking a bath and there's a creepy creature in there, spoiler, and the mom comes in, like what happened, what happened? And all of this happens, she crumbles back and this happens. Also, by the way, this has fantastic sound design. Let's play this. Love this. Anyway, so we're looking at this because a student of mine needed something with creepy hands, which made me think of this, right? And spoiler, there's an awesome reveal at the end when she goes, rah, but I'm not going to show you this here. The reason why I want to talk about this here is that even on something like this, that's creepy in a horror movie and you're thinking, well, I can't really use that for anything in my animation. My thought is, yeah, but first of all, there's a lot to unpack here. I think there's a lot of really cool stuff. You have potential only pantomime and lip sync. Now you have something where someone is reacting without any words and it's just the shock on the face. So you can play up all of this, just that in your pantomime while someone is reacting and potentially saying something or also just having pantomime. So just as a back and forth, someone is reacting to something that's behind the other character. She or he doesn't know what's going on. And this is just shock. It could also be totally different. It could be laughter. You mean like you can make this work for whatever, whatever shock content you have. But I like that setup where you have one character just absolutely terrified. Could also be really, really laughing. Again, you can go into full extremes and the other character is just reacting and with or without lip sync, whatever line you can find here. The other thing that's cool is also as she goes back, if you look at what she's doing here, look at the mechanics of the arm and the legs, it's a scramble back. So a classic thing, for instance, Animation Mentor, we have a body mechanics class. And if you go into more advanced stuff, you can pick from a list, but you can also choose if you wanna do something else. One of the things could be, what if that is your shot? The scramble is your body mechanics, but now you wanna do a bit more. You wanna add a bit more character. Well, maybe you add this as a beginning, as an audience, you're going, why is this character so shocked? Then you cut to this character or to this angle. And then you have your body mechanics that you can show off. You have this, which can be the lip sync or pantomime. Again, if you go and expand upon the uh, body mechanic shot. And this can continue on and on where you have different reactions. You actually can show off what's going on. This could be something creepy. This could be something for humor, whatever it is. So we talked about this and I thought that that's a really neat combination. You can add another character who has a reaction there. Again, this is another reaction where it just escalates. All the reactions escalate until you realize what is going on behind them. And then you can do whatever you want to with that. Of course, the topic came up, well, this is way too creepy. Let's say you want to send this to Disney. That's probably not the right idea. It's way too creepy. So my response to that was, not that I can speak for Disney recruiters, but it could be something interesting when you do something like this that's maybe a lot shorter. You might have a close-up, but it's maybe mostly about body mechanics. And maybe you have it like that. It's shocked, it's body mechanics, shocked, and what's going on into this. And by now, if once you hit that moment, you're actually constantly zooming out of the shock. By that, I mean, there comes a point where you reveal a TV. And then you have the kid acting, the mom acting, whatever it is that might have been creepy, maybe dial it down so it's not super creepy, but it's just, it's been a camera that looks at a TV and we constantly back away from it. So we start to see what's going on around it. There's a table, this could be at the wall or whatever. And then you cut to the shot where you have two kids watching it. So one could be really happy eating a lot of popcorn, stuff is spilling around. The other one has the pillow right where the eyes are, it's freaking out. But then it's a bit more cartoony and you got that cartoony aspect of it. So you did something that's potentially slightly creepy, but it's not completely off the mark in terms of something you send to a company. Clearly you have to do research so that whatever you send to a company is appropriate. But maybe you can start with something that's ever so slightly creepy, but not too much, but just long enough so that by the time you're like, this is not really what we do, you zoom out or you truck back with the, with the camera and then you realize, oh, it's a TV, cut to the kids watching. And it can be that, that cartoony, fun play back and forth between one sibling, love 
loves it, the other sibling doesn't like it, and do something cartoony with that. And that's what I wanted to show, where we had to laugh during the class because we started expanding upon the topic and what we could do with it, and it's it still started from a horror movie. So just because you want to do something cartoony doesn't mean that you can't watch those type of movies for inspiration. There's always something in terms of a setup. This could be a staging setup. This could be just for composition generally. This could be how characters interact. This could be a back and forth. Or like in here, it's a reaction to something that a character sees. The other character does has no idea behind them and what that character is seeing and why they're acting like this. And then you can play up with, again, like I say pantomime, or if you find sound, it could be what you're seeing, what you're seeing, and that's, it, that's your lip sync with the other characters doing pantomime. So for any student watching this, and again, this is something that I recommend to all of my students, you got to watch a movie or TV show at one a week. Just there's always something in anything that you watch that you can pick out as an inspiration for your shot. This can be very broad, obviously, because you should copy things out of existing material, but it's, as I always say, a springboard for more ideas. And this can be out of unlikely sources like a horror movie, even if you want to do something cartoony. Speaking of sources, if you want me to be the source of help for your shots, I do have workshops, so if you like that type of analysis, Analysis and you want to incorporate those kind of ideas into your awesome shots, you can sign up at any time. You know the drill. Link in the description with all the information for my workshop. You can sign up anytime. You can start anytime. You can show me anything. So let's work together to make your shots even more awesome. And speaking of awesome, you know also the end. If you're still watching, even if it's been a shorter clip, I appreciate it. Thank you for the time that you spent on watching my clips, whatever this one or any other clips that I upload. And speaking of which, subscribe if you don't want to miss any of his uploads because I do upload a lot. And that is that. I will say thank you and I'll see you in my next clip.